Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Okay, today I'd like to continue the discussion on antenna. Okay, earlier on I have discussed various antenna parameters. This video I'm going to discuss on the effective antenna bandwidth. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 10 series discussion on antenna. So guys, if you're keen to know more about antenna, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on antenna. This is my email. Okay, if you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, i like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, please help to smash the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe or maybe later on when you learn something from this video, okay, please remember to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Okay, so these are the series of discussion that I've done for the video on the discussion on the parameters of antenna. As I mentioned earlier on, this video, I'm going to concentrate on bandwidth. Okay, what is actually antenna bandwidth? Antenna bandwidth actually refers to the range of frequency over which an antenna can effectively transmit or receive signal with reasonable consistent performance. So in short, bandwidth actually quantify okay, what will be the frequency range that the transmitter or receiver can work. So therefore, this bandwidth play an essential role. How can we quantify the bandwidth? So this is typically defined by the frequency range where the antenna impedance, okay, which is the impedance, the VSWR, radiation pattern, or the gain. Okay, so these four parameters, they actually meet certain criteria. When they meet certain criteria, then we classify them as the antenna bandwidth. Okay, so this is what it means. Okay, they are usually determined by a specific level of efficiency or signal strength. So if we meet this criteria, then we quantify this as the antenna bandwidth. Bandwidth can be expressed in absolute term. Okay, absolute term means that they can be expressed in hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, or gigahertz. And sometimes we can also describe bandwidth in a relative term, okay, such as a percentage of the center frequency. Okay, what are the types of bandwidth? Okay, in antenna, typically we have we have this called narrow band and we also have wide band. Okay, besides this term narrow band and wide band used for antenna, maybe for filter also. We have narrow band filter, we also have wide band filter. Okay, I guess you know the meaning. Okay, what is actually a narrow band? Okay, an antenna okay, with narrow bandwidth is actually optimized to work only at a very target range of frequency. Okay, they are typically used in application like AM, FM radio, and fixed frequency communication system. In short, okay, so if you have the so-called the frequency that you actually transmit, for example, under this AM or FM, okay, you actually prefer to have a narrow band bandwidth because the larger the bandwidth, you are going to have more noise. So in short, in order to have a better signal-to-noise ratio, you actually want it to be as suitable as possible bandwidth, which means that the bandwidth must be just nice, not over and not under. So this is the meaning of this narrow band. So in short, if our application don't require us to have a wide band, then we prefer to use a narrow band in order to minimize the noise. As for wide band, okay, a wide band antenna can actually operate efficiently over a broad range of frequency, okay, such as TV antenna, certain mobile phone okay, antenna, and also UHF and VHF system. Okay, so besides this narrow band and wide band, you can imagine that, for example, we can uh, have a dual band, triple band, etc. So these are all the types of bandwidth that the antenna actually has. So one important criteria, okay, the antenna bandwidth is actually very crucial for any communication system to ensure that they are able to transmit and also receive without any significant loss 
distortion or reflection over the desired frequency range. Okay, often the required bandwidth is one of the key parameters used to select an antenna. Okay, for instance, many antenna types have very narrow band and therefore they are not suitable for wide band operation. So in short, before you actually can start to buy okay, any antenna, you must take a look on the bandwidth, whether this bandwidth suit your case or not. So this is actually a very simple way to quantify what is actually a bandwidth. When we talk about the frequency range, okay, we talk about the frequency range of the antenna bandwidth. Okay, so this is what it means here. It's simply the difference between the highest and lowest frequency. So in short, the highest and lowest frequency will give us the bandwidth. Okay, an example here, for example, if an antenna actually operates between 900 megahertz and 1100 megahertz. So over here, you can see that 1100 minus 900 megahertz, you actually has 200 megahertz. So the bandwidth is actually 200 megahertz. Larger frequency minus the smaller frequency. Okay, the degree of error in the, this kind of so-called program is not a key concern, okay, which means that the error that we actually estimate for the antenna bandwidth is actually not a major concern okay, because the real antenna and the antenna system will actually introduce quite a large variation. So in short, okay, for example, we do some form of simulation and we also have the actual antenna. They actually provide quite a fair bit of large variation. Okay, so therefore, okay, it's intent to set reasonable expectation okay, not to predict the bandwidth with precision. So in short, the bandwidth okay, is not to so-called predict exactly or with certain tolerance. You must expect to have a reasonable expectation. So this is what is actually antenna bandwidth. So what are the key parameters? Okay, firstly, we need to know the antenna type. Okay, typically for low impedance antenna, okay, they will in general have a wider bandwidth, which means that Low impedance antenna, they will have wide bandwidth. High impedance, they will have a narrow band antenna. So basically, in short, low impedance, okay, which means that I will, I'm going to have a wide bandwidth. High impedance, which means that I'm going to have a narrow bandwidth. And also on the antenna material, so typically we will use copper or aluminium. Okay, so basically these are cheap and available. So they still exhibit loss. Okay, that may affect the antenna bandwidth. So hence, okay, it is very important that we use the correct diameter wire. So if we use a very small diameter wire, you can imagine that the loss will be bigger. So in, in, in session, okay, so basically we want to use a reasonable large diameter okay, so that the loss will be minimized. We talk about the antenna environment. Okay, where we mount the antenna. Okay, so by placing an antenna at a height, less than about two wavelengths above the ground, they will actually alter both the nature peak point impedance and the bandwidth at that impedance, which are practically unpredictable. So in short, for example, you, you I guess you have this kind of experience, you put antenna okay, very close to the ground. Okay, so when you actually do this, you actually alter key thing like for example, the feed point impedance and also the bandwidth. So hence, instead of receiving the signal, you are not able to receive the signal anymore. So hence, it's always important to place an antenna as high as possible. Okay, so this will ensure the line of sight and also to ensure that nothing will be distorted. Fit line mismatch. Okay, for example, we need to fit a 72 ohm antenna. So the antenna has a characteristic impedance of 72 ohm. Okay, with the commonly used 50 ohm coaxial cable. Okay, so we use this coaxial cable to join the antenna. Okay, in the initial SWR standing wave. Okay, so we actually have this standing wave ratio 1.4 to 1. Okay, so this will potentially reduce. Let's say we quantify two to one as the SWR bandwidth, where we actually have a mismatch between the antenna and also the coaxial cable. So this will further reduce the bandwidth. Okay, so from here, as you can see here, as a rule of thumb, the reduction in bandwidth is roughly proportional to the ratio of fit point to the fit line impedance or inverse proportional to the lowest achievable SWR. So in short, this S uh, SWR need to be as small as possible. So from this case, you can see that okay, it should be 50 divided by 70. 
And with this, you can actually see that we can actually expect about 70% of the estimated bandwidth. Okay, so this is talking about the fit line mismatch. Okay, for example, the fit line loss, okay, even well matched transmitter fit line antenna. So for example, we have a 50-50, for example, for this case, 50 ohm, 50 ohm. The system still experience some form of loss in the fit line. Okay, so the fit line made of good conductor, okay, even with a good conductor, they will exhibit some kind of loss. Okay, so this loss tends to reduce the SWR at the transmitter end of the line, effectively increase the 2 to the 1 SWR. So for this case here, instead of reduce, they actually increase, which means that the bandwidth actually become border. Okay, so this additional bandwidth is usable, okay, provided that we understand and we are actually able to evaluate the acceptable of the power loss involved. Okay, so in simple term here, Fit point is the connection point on the antenna itself. Okay, so for example, antenna okay, with a BNC connector. So that will be we call the fit point. While the fit line is the cable that connect the antenna to the transmitter or receiver. Okay, so I just want to quickly define what is fit point, what is fit line. Fit point is, for example, the port that fit to the antenna. For example, a, a SMA connector, etc. So that what we call as a fit point. Point. While the cable to join the antenna, for example, is what we call a feed line. Okay, for example, okay, we can use a both BNC type cable to join the antenna. So the cohesive cable is actually known as the feed line. Coming to the item number six, okay, the antenna shorting and loading. Okay, when we actually short an antenna by loading, okay, it reduce its feed point impedance. But it also introduced components that increase the antenna Q, okay, which means that the Q actually increase, which means that we actually narrow the bandwidth. Okay, so Q is inverse proportional with bandwidth. When Q is increased, the bandwidth reduced. When Q is reduced, okay, the bandwidth actually increase. Okay, as a general rule, okay, the bandwidth is actually reduced by the same percentage as the antenna is shortened. Okay, coming to the gain, antennas have different gain at different frequency. Okay, so the gain is not going to be flat. At different frequency, we actually have different gain. Bandwidth can be defined by the frequency range where the gain does not drop below a certain level. So in short, how can we quantify the bandwidth? Okay, in short, we can actually compare against the gain. For example, we know that certain gain that we need in order to receive the signal, for example, for this case here. So therefore, we need to ensure that the gain does not drop below a certain level. Okay, so the, the so-called the range, therefore, we can actually define as antenna bandwidth. We talk about radiation pattern. Okay, so the distribution of the radiate energy can actually shift with frequency and the antenna bandwidth may be constrained by how much pattern variation is accepted. Okay, so this is all the so-called key factors okay, that we actually can influence the antenna bandwidth. Okay, let's quickly come to a quick conclusion. Okay, the bandwidth is often specified in terms of fractional bandwidth, okay, which I have explained earlier on. Okay, the FBW is actually the ratio of the frequency range, the highest minus the lowest. Okay, so this will show the bandwidth. And if we need to get this fractional bandwidth, then we need to divide by the center frequency. Okay, the antenna Q factor also relate to bandwidth. Okay, so basically they have an inverse proportional relationship. High Q, low bandwidth. Low Q, high bandwidth. Okay, so basically this is the relationship as you can see from here. A high Q factor actually correspond to lower bandwidth and vice versa, which means that a lower Q actually contribute to a higher bandwidth. Okay, to provide some concrete example of bandwidth. Okay, so this table here show the bandwidth for common antenna type. So these are all the common antenna type. Okay, so this will address the question okay, such as, okay, what is the bandwidth of a typo antenna? Okay, which antenna has a higher bandwidth, a patch or a spiral antenna? Okay, for a fair comparison, we actually set the center frequency for each antenna to be at one gigahertz. Okay, so basically you can see that this is all the center frequency and these are all the various type of antenna from patch, typo, horn and spiral antenna. So these are all the fractional bandwidth. Okay, so from here you can see that the spiral 
actually will have the largest bandwidth as you can see from here. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.